Kate Leone from Goldfish Cards here. Earlier this year I attended um, on stage in Sydney and we were given the new catalogues to browse through um, before we were allowed to show them to our clients. And the first stamp set that caught my eye was called In This World because I loved, absolutely loved, this card that they used as a sample and thought the first stamp set that I'm going to order out of this catalogue would be this one so that I could replicate this card. So that's what I'm doing today is I'm going to show you how to construct this beautiful card that they have used as a display in the catalogue. So this is my interpretation of that card and I'm going to bring that to you now. So you will be requiring a piece of Bermuda Bay that is four and one eighth, eleven and five eighths of an inch, and two. You'll need also need a second piece that is two inches by three and a quarter inch. Then we'll be using pool party, which is four inches by five and a quarter inch. A piece of DSP. Now I've used. Um, it in similar colours to what they have used in the catalogue and my interpretation of that is Watermelon Wonder. So this DSP, this patent DSP is Watermelon Wonder and Crumbed Cake. You'll also need a piece of Whisper White that is two inches by three and a quarter inch and two pieces of craft, one at two inches by one and a half inch and one at two inches by three and a quarter inch. I'm also using some burlap ribbon and you'll need about three and a half inches of that. To start with, I'm just going to fold the card and crease it with the bone through the centre to make my fold nice and sharp. Then I'm going to do all my black stamping at the one time. So all the pieces that need black stamping are the Whisper White, the two pieces of Craft and the Pool Party. So on the Whisper White, we're just, with your black ink, Memento ink or um, basic black ink, I'm going to stamp the little chair. one side. Then on the craft I'm stamping the verse that we're using which is from In The World set. too fussed about getting this particularly straight because we're going to be cutting it out. Okay, now on the piece of pool party, we're first going to do the butterfly, which is up in that corner. So I came down about half an inch from the top of the paper or cardstock and inked it not completely on the 
paper, part of the wing is missing from the top corner. And then we're going to do the door. So now this time it will be important to get the door straight. And I wanted it to come up and cut off that wing somewhat. So I'm just going to do that. Like that. Then you're going to do the key. Now this is all done in the black. So that's all the stamping we're doing in the black. Now we're going to stamp this design, but we're only we're actually we are going to stamp it with the Versamark and emboss it in clear. So we use a backing sheet when we're stamping with Versamark so it doesn't stick to everything. We also need to use the embossing buddy to clear off any excess oils that may cause the embossing powder to stick to something that you don't um, require on your design. So then we're only stamping this funny little mappy design, I'm not quite sure what you would call it, three times. So I just did it across the top of the door. Then down the side, of the door, and across the base, of the door. Change your sheets of paper, making sure that you have folded the paper in half and creased it well. Then using clear embossing powder, holding the cardstock on an angle and just shaking the powder down, allowing it to fall on your cardstock. Now, if you get an edge that you don't want, you can use, like I have here, you can use a fine brush just to get rid of that part that you really don't want embossed. I think that was the only place that it did it. No, it did it there as well. And then that just reduces you having lines that you don't necessarily want. Then returning the embossing powder to its jar by bending the paper stock where you have creased it and placing the lid back on because when this stuff goes everywhere it goes everywhere it's very annoying. Then you want your heat tool and you're going to heat your embossing powder.
careful when you're embossing that you don't overheat your embossing powder because it becomes brittle and it'll just chip off and that's not the effect that we're requiring. So as soon as it starts to go glossy, you need to move your heat tool on so that you're not overcooking it. Now I liked to use a little bit of colour through the design so I've used a blending sponge and I've just blended a bit of colour up into this top corner like so and down around the key and then with my aqua painter and soft suede I have just highlighted a few areas of the key It's just a bit sticky, that's better. And then I just sort of swish some through around the top of the butterfly. Always make sure you have a baby wipe at hand to clean off your aqua painter. With the aqua painter and did a bit of colour spritz your colour and then did a bit of colour into the butterfly with that and above your pink or your watermelon wonder and then a little bit more over beside the other head of the key. Then the rest I did with Marina Mist. So you spritz it and just fill those sections in that you haven't already filled in with the other colours. over all the areas that have been versamarked so that you get that nice pool party colour bleeding through. process is to tear down one edge of your pool party cardstock and also to tear down anywhere sort of through the DSP um, wanting to actually tear it so that the white shows on that side and then you're just taking another piece off so that you have two pieces that rip and look a bit like that. The one piece is going to go in underneath to make up the difference of your cardstock. So you've got a rectangular piece to sit on top of your folded card. And the other piece, I'm just going to make a little bit of a Ex, um, extension above the top part of the cardstock on here. So 
you want to have it have a nice straight edge down here and then just some um, accent of DSP through here to add a bit of character. So with this one here I just got again the watermelon wonder and blended over that white edge just to take the starkness of the white off but not completely cover the white you want it to look a bit rusty stick so and I also inked the edges of the piece of DSP that I'm going to be putting behind the pool party. So how I do this is I glue the rough edge and then I glue the rough edge and I place the two together. So that you get a nice rectangular shape and then just a bit of glue through the center of this torn off bit and place that in behind the top section. Then you can attach that to your card base of Bermuda Bay. Placed it hard up against one edge and just having a nice trim around the outer edge of the Bermuda Bay. Finished with that for just now, what we're going to do is actually aqua paint our chair and our door. So to start with the door I used some soft suede just to highlight the wood a little bit in um, where the shading is already stamped. I've just highlighted that a little bring some blue tone into the door Then you need to cut it out. Now you're cutting around the actual door itself. You don't need all those added measurements that are on the stamp because we're placing the door on top of what we've already stamped on our pool party 
So we'll get rid of all that and then we'll blend around the outside with some soft suede. dark amount of watermelon wonder then I watered it down somewhat to do the rest of the chair and it just blended in really nice and made it look quite effective you don't want to have it so stark that it all just has no character well I don't like to have it like that I like it to have a little bit of character so I tend to just add the darkness as I want it rather than overkill on the darkness at the very beginning and then I can't lighten it down. So that's how I do it. Everyone does it different, but that's how I like to do it. So. With the So Saffron, used the stamp that we used for with the Versamark, stamped through the bottom part of the chair, just to add a bit of um, design behind the chair so it wasn't so stark white. Then I used the decorative label punch to cut the chair out. Try and make the chair central to the label. And the verse I just used with the blender sponge for watermelon wonder a quick swish through you don't want to over ink it you just want to add a tiny little hint of color then you need to chop this verse up so that it will fit on the card I've already chopped one up previously, it's all in here, these are little dishes that I have around specifically for this purpose, so I'm not going to spend too much time chopping this one that I've just shown you, but basically you need to chop it up to fit it on the card. We'll move back to the chair and the second piece of Bermuda Bay that is uh, two inches by three and a quarter inch and what I did was I ripped around I normally snip it just a little to start it off 
and then I ripped around the entire piece of cardstock. Now don't try and be too perfect about it, just, and don't worry if it gets smaller than the um, decorative label, it doesn't really matter, you're only putting it in there to add a bit of colour and to make it look racistic and old world, to represent the actual effect that the doors and the chairs have been that they're set in that old world style. And I'll try that out again. And you want something about that. And then I just glue the decorative label onto the piece of Bermuda Bay. And again, we're going to be dimensioning it so you peel the backing tape off and you place another dimensional directly on top of that one so that when you put it back together with the door you have the height that you need to have that level so that, so that it sits nice and level on the card. But we want to remove the dimensionals. The next process is to remove the dimensionals. Backing um, paper. And place the door over where you have stamped the door on your card. So I just kept it straight at the bottom and then I knew it would lay straight at the top. And so you can see that you've still got your dimensional lines, your drawn lines around the outside because they're stamped on the pool party. And before you affix that to the card, you need to affix your piece of burlap ribbon, which I put through here. So just place a bit of glue and then attach the burlap ribbon. And then attach your chair. Next is to make it look a bit tattered. So how I did that is again I used my aqua painter, drew the soft suede into the aqua painter. And flicked it onto the card. Not all over, just in a few desired spots. Just to give it a bit of an old world appearance or a bit tattered look to it. And I also used the Craft White, which is the Whisper White. And again, it's quite thick, this stuff, so you have to be quite liberal with the spritzer. And it dries quite thick, so you need to make sure that it has plenty of moisture. But you don't want it too moist that it's going to fade into the background. You want quite a stark white blotch on your card.
remember when you finished uh, doing the processes with spritzing inside your lid that you clean them out before you put them away because when you've spritzed your ink you have diluted it and it will dilute the ink in the ink pad if you allow it to close with that diluted ink in the lid. So you don't want to do that. You need to make sure that you clean the lids out before you put them away. Next process is to put the little words on. Now to do that I used tweezers of course, that's my favourite thing is tweezers. And in the little dish that I've got all these words cut up into, I make sure that they're all facing upwards so I know which one I'm picking up and I don't put the wrong words in the wrong place. And I also use the fine tip glue pen in this process. I love this tool for things like this, for connecting thinlets to uh, projects, all sorts of um, die cut thinlets to the project, all sorts of different things that you can use that you need a fine glue for. This is just brilliant. Just put a little bit of glue and place it on your card. Now again I didn't want these to look too um, perfect because I wanted it to be a bit old worldly or a bit tattered looked uh, to be as similar as I could make it to what I seen and fell in love with in the latest catalogue. I know this looks a bit fiddly, but believe me, the effect is really nice. my interpretation of the card that is displayed on page 145 I believe of the catalogue. So have a nice day and I'll see you again next time.